Welcome back, baseball fans, to the 1972-75 Carrier League offseason. Look at the keepers, waivers, retires. This is the fourth part of the offseason player movement. To get to a point where everybody can comport equally to the proper number of guys they want to keep, wave, and retire. Eight guys from the year of 1971, of course, are removed, and you have to determine four guys you want to keep, two to put on waivers, and two to retire. And folks, tonight is the fourth and final installment, and we made all of the moves. And then after making the moves, most of the teams had extra wavered players, and they just slid them into retirement to get to the proper number. And that's what happens in this process. If you can't make a deal and you've got some talent, but nobody wants your talent, then you just got to put them on waivers. And then guys who are on waivers, the weakest of those, just get pushed in retirement even though a Stratomatic card exists. So we went through the first uh, three quarters of the league. So tonight we would begin with the teams who played in the World Series League Championship and Divisional Round, 25 through 32. Beginning with, let's start with the San Francisco Giants. Starting the process with 40301, and we can look at, um, and actually now, this is over, I can move this over to here, and go to where they started and to where they finished. So the Giants at 40301. And we'll go to the Giants here. I can do this easier now. Now, now that the process is complete. Okay, so in the beginning of the process, Bonds, Dietz, Fran Healy, Marichal. Okay, that's fine. And then three wavered guys, you know, and obviously you just want to acquire a retired guy. What the Giants did was they did make a move for Willie Mays. The trade was made already. I can just get rid of that. These didn't happen. Get rid of those. Um, Mays, they reacquired Willie Mays. Worst case, he can be a first baseman against lefties with McCovey or a DH, but they get, they get to bring him back with one more decent year, 72, and then he can retire after that, along with Bobby Bonds, Dick Dietz, and Juan Marichal. Uh, Rich Reese was on waivers, no longer. He was kicked in retirement because his card's not very good. And the Giants comport at 40202. Um, that one was pretty easy to figure. Next team up was the White Sox. Started at 50300. Five guys wanted to keep, three guys waivers, nobody wanted to retire. See where they start and finish. All right, so they started with a process of Bill Melton, Walt Williams, Wilbur Wood, Tom Bradley, Bart Johnson. The one guy who, Walt Williams, was a nice little player. He was short, spark plug guy, leadoff hitter type. Um, he would actually go on to Cleveland and New York anyway. They were hoping they they could trade him instead of just putting him on waivers. And when the process is over, they got Bill Melton, Wood, Bradley, and Bart Johnson. They got rid of um, Walt Williams and acquired a retiring Mari Wills. They also moved Tom Egan from waivers to retirement. If we look at the trade carousel, uh, they sent Walt Williams to the Atlanta Braves. Uh, Braves are losing Kurt Motten in the outfield, uh, DH against lefty type. Uh, so, you know, the White Sox got a token out of that, believe it or not, because, you know, Walt Williams is a couple of nice years. So Atlanta gets another bat. Oh, boy. And the White Sox get a retired player, but more importantly, the White Sox get a draft token. That's what they wanted to comport to the proper math. All right. Next up in the blocks here. That was all of the moves that the uh, White Sox would make. Oakland started at 50102. And let's see what they did. They made their trade, the big the big splashy deal for Vita Blue. 
They started with Cepeda, Dick Green, Mangual, Blue, and Locker. And they moved a lot of guys. They moved Blue, Mangual, I believe Cepeda as well. And they ultimately acquired, uh, they kept Dick Green. He's going to be a keeper. But they got the two pitchers from Ohio for Vita Blue. They got Al Downing and Don Wilson. For, in the short term, they're going to be better than Vita Blue. And, of course, Bob Locker, uh, they're going to bring him back. Um, they picked up a wavered player so they can get to the proper math, retiring Ron Taylor and Foy. So there's your proper math for Oakland. No new trades to report in this round. They made these trades earlier and haven't moved since. Next up is Atlanta. And funny thing is about Atlanta, they and the White Sox um, did their math at the same time. It was indeed, didn't have a lot of guys I wanted to keep. It was Hank Aaron, Marty Perez, and Mike McQueen. They had three retiring players, so we just spoke about it. They sent the retiring Mari Wills for Walt Williams. Let's go look at what Orlando looks like now. Aaron, Perez, Williams, Mike McQueen. And uh, Tom Kelly and Mott are on waivers now. And uh, so basically Walt Williams will take up Mott's spot on the active roster there. All right, next up, after Atlanta... It's Philadelphia, starting the process at 50300. And also, I wanted to report that, you know, as the overseer of all this, the commissioner, or whatever you want to call this, setting up this whole thing, I went over a trade in the previous round after thinking about it and thinking about it, and I didn't like it, and I, I canceled a deal that Philadelphia made excuse me, that the Angels made with the Dodgers. Here we go. So in this deal, we had um, Jay Johnstone going to the Dodgers. And after further review, I just did not like that timeline move at all. I looked at it a little closely. So Johnstone's got a pretty forgettable 72 and 73. But he really, as soon as he arrives in Philadelphia in 74, 5, and 6, he has career years. So I didn't like the idea that, that uh, he goes to uh, the Dodgers, who, as we know, in the 1970s, the Dodgers and the Phillies would play each other frequently in a league championship series. I didn't like the idea of John Stone going there, so I canceled that trade, and I simply replaced it with this, a much smaller one, Billy Cohen for Frank Lindsay. Um, but... Uh, I just did not like John Stone going to the Dodgers. So with that, I the the new trade was that we did have the Phillies acquiring John Stone, as he should have gone in the proper light. And I think that's the next transactions. And here it is. So this is the next transaction. The Angels do send Jay John Stone and a wavered player, Jim McLaughlin, who ultimately will be put on retirement because he's not very good, for two keepers. Darren Johnson and Barry Lursch. Johnston was originally a token player because he hit 300, 329 as a matter of fact. But I didn't add any tokens to this deal because you're getting two for one. You're getting Darren Johnson has like one good year left and Barry Lursch turns to a nicer lever for Johnstone here. So I made it an even trade with that. And then when we look at the, um, the proper math for Philadelphia here, from where they started to where they finished. They started the process with Boa, Darren Johnson, McCarver, Dobson, and Lursch, and three wavered guys. They'd make a lot of moves, and they'd settle for Boa, makes sense, Johnstone, McCarver, and Pat Dobson. Only Pat Dobson is the outlier. He didn't play for the Phillies, but he has a really good 1972 card coming off of the 1971 20-win season with the Orioles. So really, it's a byproduct of the big trade of Grant Jackson, who used to be a starting pitcher for the Phillies, to Baltimore, where he went into the Baltimore bullpen with a 73 card. So that trade is looking pretty good for both teams because they're going to get another year out of Pat Dobson. And then um, 
I think they moved Roy Foster in retirement along with Jim McLaughlin, who they got in that deal, who was on waivers, moved him into retirement with just Jerry Johnson and, and Joe Horner on waivers. But uh, that's a nice little group of Philadelphia um, familiar names for the Phillies in their heyday of the mid to late 70s when they start winning the National League East. All right, next up is the Baltimore Orioles. Now, they made all their hay much earlier in this process when uh, they made the big deal um, and traded uh, they traded into Lee May and out of Boog Pal in the blockbuster deal uh, with Joe Morgan involved with the Reds and the Indians and the Yankees and that big, huge trade. So they started this process with Echebaron, Boog Pal, Brooks Robinson, Earl Williams, and Dave McNally. Oh boy, a lot of movement here. Ton of movement. Buford going on waivers, Bobby Wine, and Wilson in retirement. Now that the process is over, they traded for Mark Belanger. They traded Frank Duffy for Belanger. We talked about this during the year. Each team had each other's shortstop, Cleveland and Baltimore. So they swapped them. So you have Belanger, Lee May, uh, Morgan leaves Houston to go to Cincinnati. Uh, Lee May leaves Cincinnati to come to Baltimore, skipping a stop in Houston because the Astros didn't want him because they had Bob Watson at first base. And Lee May replaces Boog Powell, who went to Cleveland. Of course, Brooks Robinson. And then they're going to go with Earl Williams, going to try and renege more out of that Davy Johnson trade that seems so one-sided because actually Earl Williams has a couple decent years. Probably not as an everyday catcher, but at least in a platoon, he's, he's serviceable. So they're going to make uh, him the fourth keeper. Buford's on waivers. They acquired Rick Reichert in the carousel move as another waiver guy with Bobby Wine and Bill Wilson. So that's how Baltimore gets to 40202. No new transaction to report. Next up, Tigers and Pirates. And I think we might have some trades popping up here now. The Tigers moved Bill Hands, who pitched in the World Series. He was the number three star for the Tigers. They moved him to the Texas Rangers for Pete Broberg, who they're going to put on waivers. Broberg struggles a little bit, needs to find himself. I think he gets sent down to the minors and comes back. But Bill Hands does pretty nice work with the Texas Rangers, and the Tigers get a token in making that move. Is that the only move they would make? Yeah, that is it. And so let's take a look at the World Series representative Tigers, where they started the process and where they currently are. So they started the process with Norm Cash, they want to keep. And that's great, too, by the way, that the Tigers, who we've talked a lot, a lot about, the 1968 Tiger team that won the World Series, they just keep running their guys back. You know, Freehand, Cash, Horton, Kaline, Northrop, McAuliffe, Lolich. So the running back, Norm Cash, one more time. Al Kaline, one more time. Mickey Stanley, one more time. Uh, and they had Joe Coleman and Bill Hands. So that's why Bill Hands had to be moved. Gates Brown on waivers. There's no room at the end. Billy Grabarkovitz on waivers. Fred Sherman, nice little lefty reliever, all on waivers. Doesn't mean, once you put a guy on waivers, you could get him back, you know, and that's what the Tigers have to hope for. So they're going to keep Cash, K-Line, Mickey Stanley, Joe Coleman, Broberg, in the, who they got in the Bill Hands trade, uh, will go on waivers along with Fred Sherman. And Gates Brown has to go into retirement, as does Billy Grabarkowitz. And they have pretty marginal cards anyway. But uh, if you go in retirement, you could still get drafted. This is not elimination of the player. It's just I'll have a section of cards in each of the uh, draft boxes labeled wavered guys and retired guys. A retired guy means um, obviously you'll see retired players who don't play baseball anymore, but if a guy isn't very good anymore, he'll also get a retired classification, as in the case of Brown and Grabarkowitz. And then the last team to make moves before we have a, a flood of uh, accounting moves is the Pirates. And this is a very intriguing move. Um, let's just go to the Pirates. I find this to be a very fascinating move in the offseason. Pretty clever for the two teams involved. 
So, the Pirates. Let's take a look at where they start. Roberto Clemente, Willie Stargell, Rennie Stennett, Steve Blass, and Bruce Keeson. Now, the thing with Blass is, he just got you a World Series ring in 1971. In traditional Major League Baseball history, he won Game 7 of the 71 World Series. The Pirates just won the 71-74 Carryover League World Series. That's why they draft 32nd. But with five keepers, looking carefully at the career of Steve Blass, he has got one more good year in 1972. Meanwhile, Bruce Keeson, he's a pirate throughout the decade, even though he's not quite as decorated, doesn't pitch on three days rest, you know. Um, so what the Pirates did, they decided to keep Clemente, Stargell, Stennett, and Keeson, putting, uh, they traded Mazeroski for, a, as a retired player, for a waived Ted Kubiak, Bob Robertson's going on waivers, and re the retiring Dick Kelly. But the move, here's the kind of cool move. Steve Blass, the Pirates send Steve Blass to the Boston Red Sox. And Pittsburgh gets a draft token for him. Do I have this up here? I don't have it up here anymore. I had it up for a moment. Um, let's take a look at this blast season, since we're kind of at the end of the analysis here anyway. You know, take a take a peek at this. 72 blasts is an all-star, 19 and 8 with a 249 ERA and 249 innings, and then he turns into a pumpkin. Okay, that would have been a great year for the Pirates, but they're the Pirates, they're loaded. It's only one year, and his career is over. So they're shipping him uh, far away <laughs> to the American League. And if the Pirates go to the World Series again and, pl and play Boston in the World Series, they might regret the move. But if you're the Red Sox, you really have to appreciate picking up an, an ace, even though he's only got one year left, and giving up. I was thinking of giving up the two tokens. And you know what? I thought giving two tokens instead of one was too rich. Because the Pirates won the World Series. Let's not, you know, give them, the, you know what I mean? You know, giving them two tokens instead of one for a guy who's got one year left in his career, even though it's a very good one. But uh, let's look at Boston now after making that deal. So Boston, once again, poor Roger Moret has to go back into the bullpen yet again. It's Louis Tiant, Bill Lee, Rick Wise, and Steve Blass. Wow. Hey, Boston, you finished in last place. Baltimore, New York, and the surprising Blue Jays. Boy, this division is brutal. But Boston had to make a splash because they were in last place a year ago. So they're going to have some good starting pitching next year. They can go head-to-head -head with the Orioles and Yankees now. And Roger Moret's still there. He's a lefty, but now he'll go back into the bullpen with Ted Abernathy. And a couple, you know, questionable long men. So that was a good trade. And then after that, oh, we had one more trade. The Dodgers wanted to fortify their bullpen, so they uh, traded uh, a retiring Gary Wasilewski for Barry Lursch, who the Angels picked up in that trade with the Phillies. So now your Angels get that token here. They didn't get it up there. They get it here now. So they lose Johnstone, they added Darren Johnson, they move Lurch, they pick up a token. Here's a really interesting trade. Kansas City trades a, guy, a pitcher of theirs, they put on waivers, Mike Hadeland, for a Kansas City pitcher that Florida had, who's a keeper, though the Royals are going to probably put him on waivers as well. At least the, the Royals might want to change their mind and think about keeping uh, Del Canton. And then we have some waiver retired trades between teams just to get to the proper math. Uh, this is a retired player for a waived player. Same thing here, infielder for infielder. I think that's the end of the transactions because what happened after that was, let's go look at this list again of the proper math here. Uh, we had about 74 guys who were on the waiver list that had to be pushed in retirement because you can, I mean, a guy could be good, but if nobody wants your guy and you have nobody to trade with, there's not a lot you can do. 
Baltimore, we talked about them. They have the proper math. Boston had to retire. They had four wave players, Larry Stahl, Hal King, Jackie Hernandez, and Mike Andrews. They have to retire Mike Andrews and Jackie Hernandez because nobody wants them. Yankees had the proper math, as did the Blue Jays. The Expos had to, uh, they acquired Don Clendenon in a trade with the Blue Jays only to put him in retirement. He's got a lousy card. Again, all these guys who move into retirement have pretty lousy cards. Ohio didn't do anything, nor did Cleveland that round. And again, the Tigers had Gates Brown on waivers with Krabarkowitz. They're now on the retired list. Milwaukee had to move Jerry McNurtney, who was on waivers, to retirement. And he's got a pretty bad card anyway in 72. So that sometimes it's good to finally clean clean house. And the, the questionable guys I kept around because they qualified for waivers. It was time to move them over to retirement in the case of McNurton. He wasn't very good. Twins didn't have to make any moves. White Sox had Tom Egan on waivers. He's not very good anymore, so they made him a retired player. They already made the deal for Mar uh, getting retired Mari Wills. They're happy with Melton, Wood, Bradley, Bart Johnson. They'll draft Rich Gossage in the bullpen. They'll be, they'll be good. Royals didn't make any moves in this round. Uh, Angels had, uh, at one point, they had six guys they wanted to keep. And so they settled for Mickey Rivers. Paul Shaw is still a very good third baseman. He's actually a Kansas City third baseman. Jim Spencer and Darren Johnson, they can make a DH in the American League. Um... Alomar was a keeper, and check it out. He's on waivers. This guy's a full-time player, Sandy Alomar. I think I just had him up here on the board. Very, it, you know, and it's like, well, how do you... You can waive a full-time player if he's just kind of ordinary. And Alomar, it's 239, 238, 261. So, yeah, he'll be in the league. I'm not disputing that. He'll be in the league, but the Angels <laughs> decided to put him on waivers and, and taking their chances. I guess you could say it's the handshake agreement. It's like, well, if nobody acclaims you, uh, you can come back. So he's got an invitation to come back to the Angels if he can't find a deal elsewhere. Uh, Sandy Alomar does go to the Yankees in the mid-70s before they uh, would eventually get Willie Randolph to play second base. But they're happy with Rivers, Shaw, Spencer, and Darren Johnson, who they got from the Phillies. Wasilewski, retired player from the Dodgers, along with Billy Cohen. Oakland has the proper math. We went over the, them earlier. Seattle had to push Ron Woods. Ron Woods was a keeper, but he's just an okay corner outfielder. They put him on waivers. And then they had the two retired guys. But they're happy with Joe Pepitone, Steve Klein. Skip Lockwood, now going to be a closer, was a starter, goes into the bullpen, making room in the rotation for Ross Grimsley. So Seattle's making some nice moves there. Rangers bring it back. Frank Howard, one more year. Uh, Dick Bosman, Bill Hands, Paul Lindblad, and uh, retiring Mel Queen they got from Colorado, and Gonzalez. The Marlins had to push one guy... Or they just made the move. They traded Joe Moeller uh, to the Dodgers. They got Joe Moeller to the Dodgers, and they gave them a waiver player. And the Braves, we talked about getting into the proper math. And the Mets, unbelievable. They once had eight guys they wanted to keep. Uh, they made some deals. They sent uh, Cleon Jones and Danny Frazella away. They sent Ed Cranepool away, who was a lifetime New York Met. But in this offseason, they can't keep him. And you're not going to put Ed Cranepool in waivers. He's a 300 hitter in 75. And like, well, why aren't you keeping a 300 hitter? Well, because I got to keep Rusty Stahl or acquire Rusty Stahl. But Harrelson's not going anywhere as long as he's a one or two at shortstop. Tom Seaver, of course, and Tug McGraw. They're going to keep him until the last moment until he goes to Philadelphia. So the Mets aren't making... And he, you know, they're not going to do anything stupid. And the eighth guy was Gary Gentry. He was a very good starting pitcher, and he is on the waiver list now. They've had to put Gary Gentry on waivers because everybody had enough starting pitching. You know, that's what happens. Everybody's got enough. Talked about the Phillies. 
Cubs did not make any moves in this round. They had the perfect math. A lot of teams uh, finished this portion of the draft earlier, like the Reds. We talked about the Pirates and the Red Sox making a deal to get to the proper math. The Cardinals didn't do anything this round. Nor did Arizona. They they did uh, finished everything in the previous round, as did the Rockies. Uh, Las Vegas made the one move uh, with Pittsburgh, a retired Bill Mazeroski for a waived Ted Kubiak. Nothing major there. Uh, Portland didn't, didn't do anything in this round either. Nor did Houston. Houston made what when Houston made the Joe Morgan trade, they made sure that they got the proper number of keeps, waves, and retires when when all is said and done. So, Tommy Helms. Ken for Steve Mangori. Nice little pick up there, lefty reliever. A nice, yeah, because he wasn't really, he was actually a Kansas City or Cleveland pitcher. So Houston gets him now, part of them with Joe Morgan compensation. And Dave Roberts, nice little pitcher. Well, he had a great year for the Padres. Just okay years for the Astros, but he's there now. Dodgers settled for Willie Davis, Andy Messersmith, and then they had to go outside the organization to fix their bullpen. They had Gary Wasilewski, they had uh, Pete Mickelson on waivers, and another retired player, Joe Moeller. So they found Frank Lindsay and Barry Lursch have pretty good years in 72. Uh, Messersmith in 73, Willie Davis in 73 or 74. Padres had to move Dave Campbell from waivers to retirement for the proper math. And the last team, the Giants, had to do something similar. It was Rich Reese. He was on waivers. He has to now go into retirement at 40202. And so every team now has a 40202. And then when you look at the very top here, when you add up all these 40202s, you come up with this number, 1286464. 128 guys you want to keep, 64 in waivers, 64 in retirement. Also, the math supports this as well. Um, you take, this is the year and the player number within the year. You add any values over here. And when you add up the math from all of that, the grand uh, summation for all teams is this number, 184272. Let's see what's wrong with this one. Maybe it's because of this. I don't know. Let me, let me see here. Oh, there's a guy right here. Orlando Cepeda. He has to go oh, down here. There, I had him in the wrong spot. So he goes down there. This is the area reserved for where pitchers um, are supposed to be and hitters are supposed to be, okay? But you can go in this process and have um, the a number like 11 and 8 or 11 and 9. But as long as you go into the draft and uh, add an appropriate number of guys, you're, you're fine. It's just that there's no... Actually, what I can do to fix this is very simple. Um, let's see here. I can move a... I can move a retired hitter. I can move a retired hitter like Elrod Hendricks, okay, down here since, since his car will be gone anyway. Uh, and since I know Orlando Cepeda will be picked up by Ohio. But I got the proper math on that one. Cleveland as well. Sometimes you have some leave some numbers there by mistake. Okay, and this one, oh, there's another number there. Should be there. There we go. So there can be more trades, but for now, we have created a waiver pool of 64 guys, two per team, and everybody has a proper number of guys they want to keep at this point in the offseason. 
So that concludes this part of the off-season look of keepers, waivers, retirements. Uh, we get next week. Uh, we'll start to look at the guys at the waiver list and see if there are, are any gems in the waiver list and what year that might be. Because uh, you go on waivers because you have a card in '72, but you could have your card selected in any of the years '72, '73, '74, or '75. That's it for tonight for Keep Wave Retire. Hope you're enjoying the series, and we'll see you next time.